out. So what you're going to see is your name will become here and um, it will say ICOX training 2022. Then what you're going to do is, so this over here, once you press the fork button, that's your name is going to appear over here. Um, and that means that this is your copy now. So it will say, um, um, I would say eCaroon, ICOPS training 2021, uh, 2022, I've got the year wrong, and I'm going to make a change. So I'm going to find the file, and the file I want you to work on is this workshop participant session two, uh, markdown.md, which is a markdown file. So find that file, and then you're going to press the pencil button, and you're going to edit it. So it says so you've got to add your name, you've got to add your GitHub username, and then you've got to answer the question. So you're just going to type down here what it is. And then once you've done that, remember to scroll down to the bottom and you're going to press the commit button. OK, the green commit button. Um, and remember to write your commit message, which can be something like um, I did my details to the document, something like that. Um, and then once you've done that, you're going to start your pull request. So on the repository, you're going to go to, um, it doesn't, uh, for, to start a pull request, it doesn't actually matter where you are in the repository. You can actually start a pull request from anywhere in the repository. So you're going to press the pull, the pull request button is sort of at the, at the top of the repository always. And it's always there um, at the top, whatever page of the repository you're on, whatever document. So you're going to press that. And then there should be nothing, no pull requests, because you just forked that repository. So there won't be any active uh, pull requests. So you're going to go across to the new pull request button, which I've just made a bit bigger here. You're going to press that. And then it comes up and it's a bit like a form, what you'll see. So you'll see this open a pull request this bit at the bottom here. Um, and what you do is you type in a title in this sort of blue outlined box. And you don't really need to type anything else. I would just type the title, adding, you know, adding my details or something like that. And then remember to press the green button, which is the sort of commit button to create the pull request. And that's all you need to do. So you're going to fork the repository. So find the repository, you're going to fork it. Then you're going to find the document, edit the document, and then you're going to do a pull request. So find the pull request press the green pull request button, give it a title, and then press the green button to create a pull request. Okay, well, so what's going to happen then is um, you just have to wait to see the magic happen. So what happens then is the owner of the repository will be able to see the repository, so it, uh, see the pull request, so it comes up in the main repository and um, I will be able to see it. I'll be able to see you here, that you've done it. And then I will actually be able to, because it's asking to put from your, uh, so this is Malvika's account into the Alan Turing account there. But I, it should say your account to into uh, open Vitalist account from your account is what the pull request will say. Um, and it will also say here that one file has been changed. And then what I'll do is I will review it and I will then merge it. Um, have I done this? So I will be able to see the changes because I will be able to see that you've added your name like this. So this is what it would have looked like before. This is what it would have looked like when you added your name uh, in the sort of green. It's always highlighted in green. Um, and the pull request just gives details of what, what has happened. So who's done it, what the edits, have, uh, edits files have been, the changes that have been made to those files, um, and then who approves it as well as recorded in the pull request. Um, okay, um, so I've made a bit of a change in that file. I'm going to go to, so I've made my own copy now, forked copy. I'm going to go to pull request. I'm going to do a new pull request. Yeah, so this sort of comparing, so it's asking me this at the top, do I want to, so this is the base repository, so this is the main repository where we've got it from. Um, the head repository, that means like where you're working at the moment, like where you are at the moment is your head repository, so that's your own forked version is where you've made changes. Um, and this is giving you details of what's happened, so I 
the red is what was there before, the green is the change that I've made. And this is showing my actual commit that I've made. So I'm just gonna press create pull request again. For some reason it's put in this new step. So this is where we're gonna add in the name here now. And I'm gonna do it, for, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it for all of them. So that means I'm gonna do it three times to pull the reviewing the pull request. And then three times is the magic number for learning things, if you don't know that, to see something done or to read something three times. That's how apparently you get it into your long-term memory. So, um, so hopefully this will get into all of your long-term memory now. <laughs> at the top here. So I'm going to click on the pull request. And you can see I'm in I'm in the, the, the original repository. Okay. So this is what you'll see. Um, so I can see that Gabby has made a change in her in her fork. Um, and when you when you it automatically does allow you to um, because of the way this is set up um, it it will allow me to merge something because I, I'm um, an admin. I have admin control of this repository. So I don't actually have to approve it, but um, the but it is good practice to do the approving. I'm out of it just to show you what I was talking about, this conversation. So it's actually called a conversation, this kind of file. Um, and this is what you see when you first click into the pull request. You've got the information at the top about what changes have been made. So this could be a lot of changes. It could be like a whole page of changes because you could have been working on this branch or this fork for a really long time. Um, and so we've got um, all of these changes that have been made. Um, we can see that uh, Gabby's done one commit. So she's made one change. Uh, it was in one file. So I can click on that to have a look. So um, as we've seen before, the four is in the red, highlighted in red. So there was, there was nothing there after, it's Gabby's name. So Gabby's there, okay. Uh, there's a lot of places to click. I really understand that with GitHub, a lot of things to click, a lot of buttons. So, um, so I think, yeah, the change that she's made, that's what she, what she should have done. So I'm gonna go over to, and I'm gonna make this bigger now. So I'm going to go over to review changes. So the reviewer will do this. And I'm going to write a comment here. Um, thanks for adding your details, Gabby. Um, and you can, so if you want to um, just comment, because sometimes in a pull request, you have a couple of reviewers. Um, and that's because if you're working in a team, you might have several people that need to look at the work in this particular fork or branch, depending on what you're working in. So in this case, um, it's just me. Um, but if I was working with someone else and I wanted somebody else to do a review, I would put my review in, but I wouldn't actually approve it. I would just make a comment and I would allow probably the last person that's going to do the review to do the final approval. So the pr approval means that um, Gabby herself would be able to merge the, um, the, the work into the main branch. So it would allow the merging to happen. So if you want to do that straight away, you press the approve button. So this gives my feedback and it also approves the branch to be branch or fork to be merged into the main repository. There is this third one here, request changes. So I personally think that that one is uh, a little bit aggressive. So I don't, um, I don't think that I don't, I don't think that um, it's good practice to use that one request changes because if you do that, um, the person who owns the branch has to make has to accept your changes and feedback before they can then merge the um, the branch. So you're kind of saying. Um, I want you to do this change, this change, and this change, you must do it, or I'm not going to approve the, the uh, merging of the branch. So it's, it's quite aggressive. It's quite an aggressive move. So really, it, it sort of goes against the whole sort of collaborative idea, I think, of GitHub. But you do see people using it. Um, and it means that whoever did that, um, whoever has done that review, that person then needs to go back in and check again what that person, the changes that have been made, that they are satisfied with them before they're going to approve it. So I do think that's a bit, a bit uh, aggressive. So I, I never use that. Um, 
So I'm just going to click, click approve and then I'm going to press the green button, submit review. So what now? Something fancy should happen. Yeah. So um, it's got my comment now because remember, this is a conversation. So it says I have approved the changes. It's got my comment that I've made in the review and I'm going to merge it. Yeah. So it's checking all the time that things um, can actually be merged. I'm going to merge it. Um, and again, it wants you to put another message. It's all about messages in GitHub. So it comes up with a message. So I'm just going to leave it there and I'm going to confirm. OK, so that's it. So the idea that this 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 is now merged, it's merged from Gabby's account into um, into the main repository now. We should be able to see it. So let's just go and check. Um, let's find it yourself, basically. Right, I'm just going to go through and do these ones a bit quicker. So I'm in here. It's checking, checking, checking. Um, I'm just going to look at the files changed. Lucas has added in his thing, his um, details, simply getting used to it. Yeah, it's challenging enough. It is. It's just all the buttons and everything. It's a new language, I think, isn't it? <laughs> of everything. So I'm just going to say, um, same. Thanks comment and it's approved it and it can merge it so it always checks if there's a conflict because sometimes for example if you had all put your uh, names on the same line of that document it wouldn't actually allow us to merge that so I would have to sort that out before then merging that so it actually it, it, it finds uh, if there's any conflicts in the file so it's saying that there's no conflict at the moment so I'm just going to merge that there we go. And it should. Um, the other thing to remember is that it's asking you can revert back. So it's actually saying you can revert back now. Um, I think that actually doesn't work very well. But um, you can see here as well the pull request. So we still have one open, but we've had three closed. So again, in GitHub, nothing ever is closed or is deleted. So the actual history of all the pull requests is here, all the closed ones. That you can go back and look at so you can actually reopen them as well if you think you want to go back and do more work on that particular branch but it's, it's probably better practice just to open another branch or um or from work from your fork again with new bits of work so let's do javier's there so oh look javier he made two commits there so he's got two commits there all oh, right so we've got conflicting problem here this is good so github has said there's a problem now so what you can actually do is go here and resolve the conflicts so what's the problem this is something that's quite hard to figure out um, when you first see it but it's describing what the problem is and it's just as i said you both put your names on the same line so it's nothing mega scary that's happened but it's just telling us that we basically it can't do the it can't put everyone's names on the same line so this is where the conflict is the problem so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to you just make it into the way you want it to look. So you kind of I, you just ignore all the yellow bits and you just make it the way that you want to actually have it look. So it's going to look like that now. Um, and then I mark as result. So you just keep pressing commit buttons and it should now say it's OK. Yeah. The only. The only so that's quite a simple resolve when you're working on lots of documents and lots of people putting things into the same document it can get really really confusing so sometimes and really there can be a lot of conflict so sometimes you can't actually resolve the conflicts here and this is where you would have to start using um github desktop or have someone who will work from a command line tool so it's about rearranging so mostly it's about rearranging documents so I would say at the moment you probably won't come across that, but that's just something to bear in mind if you have a conflict. It might be something that you can't sort out. What I do, I have to say, because I don't work from the command line, I do sometimes use GitHub Desktop. If I get in a massive problem, I have a few people I work with who are like mega super experts. <laughs> so I just say, oh, please, can you just sort this out for me? And I just send them the pull request and I say, this is there's a conflict here. I don't know, I don't know what is going on. Um, can you just have a look at this and sort it out? So I'm sure there's someone you know who's like, 
super good um, at GitHub or someone you can message or something like that, that you could do a similar thing with. Um, but that, to me, that only ever happens on very, very large repositories. So you might not have these super large repositories. Um, you might not work on those, but, um, but yeah, it kind of happens in that sort of thing. If you have lots and lots of people, lots of very large collaborative projects that kind of happens on, so you might not come across that. So I'm just going to merge that now. Oh, no, I'm not. Did I? Oh, I did. Did I approve it? No, I didn't, did I? So actually, I can see now because I've resolved the conflict. I can see I can see the changes now. So these are the changes. The other the other thing you can do. So as well as having this review kind of button over here, you can actually start reviewing over here with this kind of plus button. So here it comes up as another comment thing. So if you wanted to say, um, please add in, add in, I don't know, something, you know, you could actually add in a single comment here and then um, that you're creating a conversation happening. Um, the other thing you can also do here at the side, so this will actually go across now to the conversation. So it's here now, the change. And then Javier um, can see, probably see that now, and um, he, can, he can see uh, what I'm suggesting for him to do. So it's basically nothing I've suggested, but just to give an example. The other thing you can do, which is really useful actually, is you can actually insert this into the comment. Um, so to add a suggestion. So if you press this plus button here, it adds in, the actual text that you've got there. So I could make a tiny change, like um, uh, just taking off the exclamation mark or something like that, um, the file now. So when we go back to the conversation, I've made a suggested change here that I, so I'm making. So I'm saying to Javier, can we make this other change before we merge this work in? And actually you don't have to ever go back to this file. Um, anyone in this pull request can just uh, save that change directly. So it's, it's a really good way of sort of editing the document collaboratively because I'm editing in, but then the, the person who did the original document can go back and check my suggestion. So it's in a sense, you're doing the same thing as you would in a Google document when, you, when you're when you doing the suggesting mode in a Google document where you're adding in bits of text that you want someone to then go and look at your suggestion. So you don't have to accept these. You can actually get, you can get rid of it. You don't have to merge that at all, or you can just directly, um, so if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to do it, you just resolve the conversation and it makes it disappear. If you want to commit it, you just commit the change and it actually just, it will directly edit the file for you. You don't have to go back and edit with that change. It just does it for you. So my change has gone in now. So there's the change in here but even though I made a suggestion here it doesn't matter actually because these are suggestions from your reviewers so it means that you just can um uh you can take them or not this is whole the whole collaboration of it you don't have to you don't have to accept the change the changes that people um suggest their suggestions rather than hard aggressive edits I suppose is the, is the difference um and then I'm just going to merge merge that so it's going to merge. So hopefully we will be able to see the original document now. So this is all done now. It's all merged. And if we go to the document here, we'll see. We should see your names there. There we go. So, um, so we've we've done forking and we did it successfully, which is brilliant.